Hi there, it's Sarah of Get Weaving. I'm calling this one Back to Basics. I realise that I've been assuming that people who are watching these videos are familiar with their loom because I was thinking about making garments from handwoven fabrics, but that's quite a long way down the line. So I'm getting questions about can I explain what wraps per inch mean and real basic stuff so that's fine apologies if you know all this or if you've seen it before I'm repeating some of this but I'm just going to do it in very very small stages because if you're a complete beginner a lot of this is still like a foreign language um, so if it helps brilliant I realize that one of the big differences is that I don't ever deal in 810s cotton or 10-3s or whatever. It's not my language at all. When I was younger, I think I was about eight, either my mum or my sister taught me to knit. We had a knitting shop up the top of the road. We had another one about three blocks away. My first job was in a knitting and haberdashery shop. Mum knitted and sewed, but nobody, whoa, not then, not near me. There were no weaving shops. There may have been one in London, but that wouldn't have been near enough for me to get hold of anything. Obviously, there wasn't the internet. We're talking about the 1970s here. And so I, my first bits of weaving at home on my little 12-inch weave master would have been using leftovers from my mum's knitting yarn. So I understand what four ply is and I understand what double knitting is and Aran. And when you've done lots of knitting, you get to the point where you kind of know pretty much what size needle you're going to use. So, for example, uh, this is a six millimetres. These are bamboo. They're lovely. And a, a really simple tip that somebody else gave me was if you want to know what needle site, this is a really chunky ball. No label, that's half the course, I'm afraid they get lost. If you want to know what size knitting needles to use, wrap your yarn twice. So I've got two loops on there. Wrap the yarn twice and then measure that. So that measures, oh, in millimetres, um, seven millimetres, something like that. So if I was going to knit with this yarn, Sounds about right, actually, seven millimetres. So knitting was not a foreign language to me. It was quite accessible. And as I said, my first bits of weaving at home would have been using bits of knitting yarn. Then when I went to college, we were using um, nine cut wool, which is very coarse. And it was set at 13 to the inch. So that was my first weaving. And I really didn't know any better. So with weaving, rather than it being stitches and rows per inch, it's ends per inch and picks per inch. So slightly different language, but basically the same kind of concept. How do you want your fabric to feel? Do you want it to be tight or soft or drapey or hard wearing? Same, same as with your knitting. I can remember years ago realising that just one pair of knitting needles won't do the job for everything. So you need different size knitting needles for different thickness yarn. And it's the same with weaving. You need a different size heddle or reed if you're using a multi-shaft loom according to the thickness of your warp and your weft. So most of my clothing is what I would call a balanced weave. In other words, like this, you've got a roughly the same number of ends and picks per inch. So you can see the warp and the weft. So you can get nice check sort of effects. Now, one of the other things is weft face, which is this. This like tapestry weaving. So the warp is completely covered by the weft. 
you can't see the warp at all except at the ends so it's just a like a skeleton to hold the pattern of the tapestry and this is many 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 rows per inch but the warp is quite spread out now the opposite end of the scale would be something like this which is warp faced this is woven on an inkle loom so with this the warps are very very close together and the weft is this grey same colour as the side warps so that your pattern is all in the warp so they can be quite simple like this they make wonderful belts this is a nice Christmassy one my friend made for me so all the colour all the pattern is in the warp whereas weft faced all the pattern is in the weft now I wouldn't want to wear this is tough <laughs> I couldn't make a jacket out of this I certainly couldn't sew it this is much softer inkle looms make wonderful belts they make wonderful neck bands because they have a tiny bit of give to them they go round corners rather nicely but again an inkle loom you have many 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 ends per inch all crammed together very little space in between them so you would have to weave an enormous length because inkle bands are quite narrow they are done in a lot of cultures and then you stitch all your bands together but that wouldn't work for me so i'm still working on a balanced weave which is the same number of warps per inch and wefts per inch a bit like knitting with stitches and rows a little so how do we work out the best set for our weaving well as i said years ago we only had this <laughs> nine cut wool which was probably from yorkshire and it was great for tweeds and hard wearing clothing but i always wanted because i'd knitted I always wanted my weaving to feel like a cosy sweater, not like a, an outdoor jacket. So there was a bit of experimenting to find out how that could be done. Now, this is long before the plastic heddles were available. The first looms I had were Dryad rigid heddle looms when I'd left college. Um, 13 to the inch, so you could really only use something very fine. So when I started teaching, I've shown you these before, we made our own heddles. These are lolly sticks with a hole drilled in them because people in my class, same as me, had lots of knitting yarn and they were learning to spin. So we made all these lolly heddles. So this one cut the lolly sticks in half, slightly finer. But we wanted to be able to put our own hand spun yarn into our projects. So this was great fun. Terrible jokes, but still. <laughs> Now, um, oh, sometime in the 1990s, I think, late 90s, early 2000s, uh, companies like Ashford came along with these wonderful plastic heddles. And I think it's worth having all of them for your loom. So this one is five to the inch. And these are the sorts of fabrics you can weave on five to the inch. So you can see they're, they're soft. Uh, this was a jacket that's a jacket that's a skirt can't remember what that is long gone um plastic really easy to use very kind to your yarns but again you have to choose the right one if you put a very fine yarn in this and you weave with the same fine yarn all the time it's going to try and close up the gaps so your fabric will draw in a lot more It'll be full of air, um, but because the warps are quite far apart, you could end up beating your weft down quite closely and you'll end up with a weft face fabric. So you want a balance between the thickness of your warp ends and the thickness of your weft yarn. And that takes a little bit of working out. Um, 
So again, it's like having the right size knitting needles for the, the yarn that you use. So this one here is 10 dent, 10 DPI. And these are the yarns that went on there. So they're starting to be finer. So that was a denim dress, skirt, jacket. Oh, some of these have been made into garments. Um, and I keep these little samples because they're actually very, very useful. So what I always use to show people is this. It's only on a piece of cardboard. So this is wraps per inch. Now you can get lots of really nice ones. This is Ashford's. So that is an inch here. Um, can't remember who makes this one. This is another really nice gauge. This is my favourite one. My friend's husband made me this. So this is an inch and this is a centimetre. So to make um, a wraps per inch, because as I said, I'm not wholly familiar with things like A2s. I get my yarn. Let's use a thick one. And I wrap it around my inch measurer. And I count. So I have two, four, six, six wraps per inch there. Now, if I was going to weave this, I would halve that number because you want enough space in between those warps for your weft. Now, half of six obviously is three. Nobody makes a three dent read, but you can get a 2.5. On the other hand, well, I could weave with something finer. So normally if you're doing, uh, this one was sport yarn, I wrapped sport yarn round this one inch and it gave me 12 wraps. So half of that is six. If I put it on a five reed, which is like this one, it would be quite spacey, which would mean that I could do a slightly thicker weft to fill those spaces. If I put it on a 7.5, which I can't show you because it's on my loom at the moment, they'd be slightly closer together. So the warps would show really nicely. Might have to use a slightly finer weft. So it's a kind of mixture of doing them. Now, this one, I'll show you this in a minute. I'll stop and do one. This is if your warp and your weft are different. So what I've done is wound one warp and one weft around this card for an inch and then I've just counted the warps so that would end up as being a five dent reed and that would give me a balanced weave so that you would see both of those pretty much equally I think I'll do it probably it's best to show you Sometimes, even if you've done all your wraps, when you do your weaving, you're not quite sure if it's exactly how you want it. Maybe I'm just getting fussier, I'm not sure. So this sample here is using, this is the warp. This is using fine cotton tape. And when I did the wraps, they came up at 15 wraps per inch. So I halved them, put them on a 7.5. and the first bit of weaving, it's not quite balanced. The weft is showing much more than the warp. It was just a small sample on my 12 inch Ashford knitter's loom. So I unwound it from the back, took the headle off and put a 10 dent headle in instead. And that is a much nicer, that's balanced. So you can see the warp and the weft are kind of equal so you see both whereas the first one i did it's very yellow so that weft really covers the warp up a lot um 
even though I did the wraps, I didn't find that out until I'd actually woven it. And then this little one, quite a mixed warp. There's ribbon and all sorts of things in there. The weft is, again, a cotton ribbon and 15 wraps to the inch. So I set it on a 7.5, but it's quite rigid. Now, this is for a summer dress. And I thought, I don't think I'd like to wear that. So I, again, undid it and put um, the five dent pedal on and wove this little piece and it's much softer. This is quite rigid. And I thought that's going to make a much, much nicer dress for the summer. So even though I'd done my wraps, I'd worked everything out, it was still worth making the sample because, as I say, <laughs> it's too much work to waste otherwise. <laughs> Um, basically, your yarns need to go on the right heddle. It, as I said before, it's like only having one pair of knitting needles. It just doesn't work. So when I've bought the rigid heddle looms, I've bought as many of the heddles as I can afford. And then later on, I add to them because it's just so annoying if you have some yarn, you want to weave something and you haven't got the right heddle for it. And I know I've seen people put the heddle on that they've got and then it doesn't work and it's so disappointing. So do your wraps. Do a little sample if that helps. I think it's worth it. It's like making mock-ups. Some people think that's a waste of time. Well, I don't because I want to be able to put the garment on that I've made and feel really comfortable in it. Um, the jacket in the background, that's what I've been doing some of lately. I'm sizing up some of my standard patterns so i was at the guild yesterday and one of my friends tried this on for me and she said yes this is fine this is very comfortable so that's going to be one of the patterns that i make um this one i'm wearing at the moment is ja001 which is this one it's the slightly longer one it's got um just a short neckband and then it's done up with a popper here which keeps it shut. Sometimes I wear it with a belt, but not if I'm sitting down all day, it gets a bit tight. Uh, so this version here that I'm wearing has got long sleeves. The original one that I did was silk and alpaca. Only had a three quarter sleeve, but I didn't, <laughs> it felt chilly. So I wove a bit extra to put on the bottom. Um, I can't really stress highly enough. If you were knitting, you would probably knit a little tension square with your hand spun. If you've done all that work, it's worth just doing that little bit extra to check it. You can tell such a lot. Obviously, this is a knitted sample. Does it feel comfortable? Has it got a bit of give to it? Could I sew it together? Would I like it? It's almost, it's not that dissimilar. But as I said, in the United Kingdom, we didn't have many or any weaving shops, certainly not around where I lived. So weaving yarn wasn't something I was familiar with and I still very rarely buy it actually. Um, it's very fine generally speaking, a lot of it and um, I do have floor looms so it's great for those for the warps but for my rigid heddle looms I prefer something a little bit thicker only because <laughs> it grows faster. Um, Otherwise, a project would take such a long time, I'd never get anywhere. So, I hope something in there has been of some help. The other thing I should have mentioned is, um, this is the variable read. This is Ashford's. No, it's not. It's just shats. Anyhow. You know, I can't remember now. Not to worry. So, you can see you've got different heddles in there and they come in sections. So, if I wanted to weave a piece of fabric, that had different warps this is really handy they're quite expensive so you've got to decide if you're going to use it so like for example this one here so it's got some very fine silk on the edges i flip that up and then it's got sari silk in the middle um this one here got fine cotton on the sides and this is rag weaving so this is quite fun you have a it's called a very dent or a variable dent heddle uh, and it comes in sections and you put the sections in that will go with 
the warp yarns that you have. You have to choose your wefts carefully, though. I've found that flat, wide, like ribbon or silk, works well, but very chunky hand spun, not so well. It weaves beautifully, but then as it goes around the front roller, the chunky bits get thicker and thicker and your tension goes a bit haywire. So, again, it's worth having a little bit of a play. So when you're starting a project, look at your yarns, figure out what the best set would be for them before you set your loom up, <laughs> because it might save you a lot of time later. <laughs> See you soon. Have a great day. Bye now. So, wrapped to the inch, uh, unnamed, <laughs> no label, I'm left-handed so I'm afraid my things are all upside down, one, two, three, it's a good start isn't it, hang on to one end, close but not overlapping, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, pretty much close but not overlapping. Fifteen to the inch. So it's fifteen wraps per inch. So if I was weaving with the same yarn, I would set it at 7.5, so you half your number of wraps if you're using the same yarn or the same thickness yarn. So, much finer yarn. I think this was sock knitting yarn actually, left over from something. Um, well, a sort of label, very old. It's finer than four ply anyway. So, wraps to the inch. Start again. Close but not overlapping. Hang on to one end. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Squidge them up. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, oops, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, oopsie, 22, 23, 24, 25 just so this would set at 12.5 assuming i was using the same thing for the weft so 25 wraps for an inch not overlapping but very close might make something of this rather nice <laughs> so 25 wraps set it at 12.5 for a balanced weave with the same yarn for the weft so next thing as you can imagine different wool from weft so you wind them both together, lying flat, preferably not overlapping, twisting, not twisting if you can possibly help it, and then you just count the warps. So Funny enough, the number would be the same, <laughs> whether you were doing the thick or the thin for the warp, because you'd be using the other one for the weft. I should be counting, shouldn't I? Never mind. A bit fiddly, this. <laughs> Get untwisted, you. 
ist besser. What have we got? Just counting the red ones all the thing, aren't you? Just about squish another one in there. So you can count count the pairs, it doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm, interesting. So I've just counted well the pairs actually, I've just realised. Nine red ones, nine maroony ones. So if this was the warp Probably set it at 10, because 7.5 would be a lot looser. Hmm. I'd have to check that this one actually went through the heddle. I think it would do, but it's got slightly lumpy bits on it. A dilemma. <laughs> no, what I'm going to say is this fine one is the warp. And then I'll use the chunkier one for the weft. So I'd set it at 10. Even though this one was originally 25 wraps to the inch, which I would have set at 12.5. Because I'm weaving with this, the set has gone down to 10. So it's worth doing these little wraps. It doesn't take very long. You have to excuse me, being a bit awkward. I'm trying to film and wrap at the same time. Thank you.